We want to show you the continued dangers of magnetic toys. And one of the products that we picked up just at a local Dollar General is these sizzlers. And we found that these ellipsoid toy magnets nearly fit through the chip tube. But it's important because it's labeled, um, they would be banned in toys for children under 14. Um, and more than 70% of cases where in kids end up in the emergency room are um, because of one of these sort of things being swallowed. Between 2009 and 2011, there were 1,700 emergency room cases connected to these sort of magnets. So the CPC has reported stomach injuries associated with these, tor with these sort of magnets. Finally, I would like to mention the hazards of loud toys to children. Research has shown, shown that one in five children in the U.S. will have some degree of hearing loss by the age of 12. And this may be in part due to many children using toys or other products like music players um, that emit loud sounds. And the National Institute on Deafness and Other Communication Disorders advises that prolonged exposure above 85 decibels will cause gradual hearing loss at any age. And they also advise that close to ears toys should not produce, produce continuous uh, sound that exceeds 65 decibels. decibels sorry. And one of the products that we found that was a cause of concern was something that someone earlier actually said they had for their child. And that's the little phone pal. And that's made by Leapfrog. And this is labeled for children 6 to 8, 18 months old. And this exceeds the 85 decibels, yet it also is clearly intended to be held close to the ear. So that's a problem. And the other noise emitting product that we found concern for was the Fisher Price Laugh and Learn remote. It's labeled for ages 6 to 13 months, and it reaches 90 decibels, and it also may be held close to the ear. Handheld tabletop floor and crib toys should not produce a continuous sound uh, that exceeds 85 decibels. So when they're measured 10 inches to the head, you know, this is a problem. And close to ear toys should not produce anything that exceeds 65. So these are things that might violate these standards. And you know, this is something that was made mandatory by the CPSIA. In conclusion, because of these to new tools, the CPSC has made progress in protecting kids. And the commission should revise certain things that they've already gone into, like the small parts standard. It should better protect kids from choking hazards. We should have a larger test tube. And they should set a limit on the total content for cadmium, cadmium, antimony, and other toxics in toys. And policymakers should overhaul our toxics policy because the current law fails to adequately keep unsafe toys off store shelves. Now for parents and consumers about to embark on holiday shopping, we offer the following advice. Remember that the Ohio Perg's report is only an example of dangerous products. And that, you know, these are some hazardous toys, but it's not all of them. There's a lot more hazardous toys out on the shelves, and it's up to them to read the labels and look out and purchase with, about their purchases and read the age recommendations and read about what the dangerous toys um, are by looking at things like our report. And consumers can also do their part by reporting unsafe toys that they find and, um, and if they have any toy-related toy injuries to saferproducts.gov. Now I would love to introduce Tracy Mahan, who will uh, and then I'll take your questions afterward. Tracy is the Manager of Translational Research at the Center for Injury Research and Policy here at the Research Institute. And um, the center's mission is to reduce injury-related pediatric death and disabilities and improve the mission to reduce, um, or to improve <laughs> scientific understanding of epidemiology, biomechanics, prevention, acute treatment, and rehabilitation of injuries.